So we talked about the fact that an array is basically a straight sequence of uh, memory elements that are aligned continuously in memory, and we can use it to implement a list or sequence abstract data type. How are linked lists different from that? Well, uh, whereas the array is a contiguous chunk of memory, turns out that the linked list doesn't have to be. The linked list is made out of little elements called nodes, and we can represent a node as a collection of little boxes. Now, how many little boxes we put together depends upon the type of linked list. So I will generally draw two little boxes next to each other for what's called a singly linked list. And in a singly linked list, this first box here represents the part of a node that stores the data. And the second one is a reference to the next element in the list. And so we form a singly linked list by taking these elements and stringing them together. So if I have like four different nodes in my list, it might look like this. Okay. And we have to keep track of at least one of these elements. And the element that we will keep track of in this case, the one that we have to keep track of for this particular drawing, is the first one. And we typically refer to it as the head of the list. It is our first element in there. And so head will point to this first element. For efficiency, in some cases, we will also keep track of the other end of the list. This is not required. We would call it the tail, and it would point to this end of the list. And then, of course, the values that we store would be in here. So if I had 7269, 7269, this would represent a basic singly linked list. Instead of storing the head and the tail, you can also make this circular. You can make it so the last element points back to the beginning. Um, we won't do that for singly linked lists, but we will do it for what's called a doubly linked list. So for a doubly linked list, instead of having a node that I draw with two boxes like this, I'm actually going to draw it with three boxes. And uh, the way that I generally represent these, so I have the three boxes there, I generally draw it such that the first one is a reference or a pointer that points to the previous element. The middle one is the what actually stores the data. So once again, this might be seven, two, six, nine. And then we have pointers that go forward and pointers that go backward. This, the next here is pointing to, to that node and then the same thing here. And what's critical about this is that these nodes do not have to be contiguous in memory. Okay, they are, uh, they can be in whatever locations in memory. I generally draw them in this order because it's easier to not have the arrows going all over the place. But this node could be in one part of memory and this could come before it and this one could come after it. It doesn't really matter. Okay, it's, it's wherever they exist inside of memory, that's fine. Uh, just as we have a head and a tail, we can make our doubly linked list with a head and a tail. Though, when I actually implement this, what I am going to do instead is I am going to have a special node called a sentinel. And so, when I do our doubly linked list, we will have one of these nodes which actually has no data in it at all. I will often refer to it as the end or the sentinel. Okay, and it will be linked into here just like the other nodes, but we make this circular. So, and I'll have to change my arrow settings for this to be very meaningful. Let's see, which one of these, is it this one? There we go. 
curved. Yeah. So move that down and then I would connect this to there and I would move that up and this gives me a circular doubly linked list with a sentinel and we'll, we'll come and revisit that concept in, in a bit. So this is an alternate way of structuring the data and I can do those same methods that we have for our abstract data type here. A, a get and a set, an insert and a remove, I can do those just as well with this layout in memory. But the way that things happen is fundamentally different and the thing that matters is that the amount of memory moves that I have to do is smaller. Okay, so if I wanted to add to this doubly linked list, so what did we do up here? Uh, we inserted a five in the third element. Well, how would we do that? Well, I would take, I would make a new node that has the value five in it. I would take this new node and I would make it refer to the six, and I'm doing straight lines for this. And then I would take this pointer that I already have, this reference from the next of two, and adjust it up to point to the five, and now you'll note that just by setting these two different pointers, I have now inserted that. I didn't have to do a whole bunch of copying everything down the way that I had to do with the array. Similarly, if I wanted to remove the two, well, all I have to do is change that one reference, and now the two is no longer in the list. If we walk this list, it goes from seven to five to six to nine. The thing to note here, I'm gonna put the, the two back in, the thing to note here for both of these is these connections are one way. So for a singly linked list, you can only walk through this list from the front to the back. The doubly linked list, its advantage is the fact that I can go from the two back to the seven because I have this previous reference and from the, se the seven forward. Okay, and those things are significant as we go and implement these. So we'll come back in the next video and we'll actually write code to implement We'll start off with a mutable singly linked list as, as our first thing that, that we're going to implement. So I honestly, I tell my students, you should draw these pictures. Okay, get comfortable drawing these pictures so you can understand it. We wanna see how we can convert this picture into actual code.